In this video, I'll show you how to get Nobo heaters to show up as thermostats like this in Home Assistant. Hello, welcome. Um, first of all, I've got my helper here. That's Oscar. Say hi, Oscar. So rude. Um, today, I'm going to install three heaters. So these are the Nobo heaters. Norbu. The Norwegian heaters, the wall heaters. Uh, I'm going to hook them up to Home Assistant, and there's a few reasons I want to automate them in that way. First of all, uh, we don't have any heaters. Hey, we should probably have heaters. We just renovated this bit. If you look at any of my other videos, this is the same room as I installed the in-wall HD and the Unifier switch, industrial switch is just up there. Uh, we want to have these automated so that we can manage children, basically, because we have a teenager and he turns them on all the time on 100 degrees and never ever turns them off. Uh, there's a six year old and he turns them either on or off and never actually considers it and complains if it's too hot or too cold. So if we can automate this and just always have them at a constant temperature, everybody wins. Well, I win. Um, so that's the main thing. Now I'm chosen these ones. So there's a Nobo, there's three Nobo heaters. There's one that Oscar's holding here. So that's what they look like. They're like a you know a thin kind of wall heater that you put on the wall. Um, and there's a much larger one here that can go behind this couch in this room. And then there's a, a slightly smaller one that goes in the other room. So there's three, right? Three rooms. Um, and all of them are going to have these things. So this is a, uh, what are they called? Energy control system. So this is a thermostat basically, but it has like a wireless connection in it. And these things are so there's three, one for each heater connects to this thing, which is a, which is a hub, right? So that's kind of the proprietary proprietary, if I could speak, part of it. Um, these things connect to the hub, which is then connected to Wi-Fi. And then there's an app and all this thing. So you're sort of into this ecosystem. However, there is an integration point to Home Assistant. So I can actually automate all this. And eventually I can probably put up motion sensors. So if no one's in the room, we can turn the energy uh, consumption down, that sort of stuff, right? Um, so that was main reason I chose is these are really good, great quality heaters. They're apparently energy efficient. I'll get back to you on that in about six months. Um, and there's an integration point to Home Assistant. So that's kind of what we're doing today. So if you are looking at putting heaters into your house, maybe consider looking at Home Assistant as an option for automating things and actually having events and um, you know combining things, chaining them up. Um, and also subscribe, like, and comment. Yeah, I know, I'm getting good at this. Um, so I think that's it. First step is just to install it. That'll go quick, because that's not very interesting. And then we'll get into the Home Assistant stuff and actually integrate it. All right, we've installed three heaters. There's another one. Um, I've added these wireless control systems on the top so that they can talk to this thing, which is the energy hub thing. I can't remember what it's called, but I'm not gonna plug that in to the wireless network. Um, or actually we're gonna plug it into LAN, I think. Power it up and um, see what comes up in the app and home assistant and stuff. I'm not sure what's gonna happen. I'm now in the Android Play Store and I'm going to look for the Nobo Heater app. So you just search for what, Nobo Energy. Uh, this is the uh, Nobo Energy Control. So the company is called Glen Dimplex for some reason. Uh, install the Nobo Energy Control and open up the app. 
and you get some you know standard stuff privacy policies whatever so you just click start setup and you want to make sure everything's plugged in which it has been of course and now the app will try and discover the hub However, I found that after some minutes, it still hasn't discovered it. It might be my network, but I certainly couldn't get the auto discover to work. So instead, I entered the hub IP address on my local network and the 12 digit unique code for the Nobo hub that is on the back of it. Um, and that seemed to do the trick. It found it straight away. So that is probably the way to do it if the auto discover function uh, doesn't work. Anyway, now I have the hub connected to the network and to the app which means I can now get the uh, the heaters onto the app as well, which means we can then automate them. So that's the next step. So the hub's working, it's connected, and then we go and we try and find the heaters. And, all right, new in this version, sure, yep. Now the thing is you can control it via the internet, which means that people on your, for some reason this must be a security thing, I don't know why, but people on your local network can also control your heaters, which is a bit odd. Here's the main menu. Uh, you have the three modes of eco, comfort, and away, or just uh, normal, which means that you're following the schedule. Now we can add a new, we're going to add a new system unit. And again, I tried automatically finding them, and it does this for 30 seconds, and nothing. It could not find it. I tried several times. So instead, manual registration, which gives you two options. You can type in the ID of the heater or the thermostat, or you can scan a QR code on the back of it. So I tried scanning the QR code. Um, which usually is a simple process. We just gotta let the app, yep, allow using the camera. And then we scan it. And we find the QR code on the, not the heater, but the thermostat, and then nothing. It didn't do anything. The QR code didn't do anything. So instead, I just decided to type in the ID for each of the three thermostats, which is not a big deal. I even tried it again, as you can see. I even tried scanning it again, still nothing. Um, so I typed in the three IDs for each of the thermostats, which is not a big deal. It's pretty quick. You only have to do it once, and then they are like forever stored in the app. So here are the three IDs. This is not an IP address. It is not an IP address. It is just the ID for that particular thermostat, and there's obviously three of them. Here we go. It's been added. And then we have to give it a name. So this particular one is in Christian's room. So that's Christian's bedroom's heater. And then we need to add it to a zone. You can see I'm trying to save it, and it says, now nah, you gotta choose a zone. So we gotta create a new zone. And a zone is a logic unit of heaters that is controlled together. So they have the same schedule and the same temperature. So I'm gonna have one zone here called the kids area. I actually ended up having three zones for the three rooms because they're used differently. But in this case, for now, we're gonna have a single zone. And then when all three heaters are added to that zone, we can then control them as a single unit. So if we go back into the zones, if we swipe, just swipe right, there's the kids area. You can see there are three heaters now in this zone and they all have the 20 degrees for comfort and 16 degrees for eco mode, which obviously you can fiddle with and change as you see fit. All right, now onto Home Assistant. So the app is used to connect the heaters to the hub so that we can then find the hub in Home Assistant and get the heaters in here. So go to Hacks, your Home Assistant Community Store, go to Integrations, and we're now going to find the uh, H-A-N-O-B-O, Hanobo, whatever you want to call it. So you got to explore and add repositories in the bottom right here, search for Hanobo, and there it is, the Nobo Hub, Nobo Energy Control. So this is a third-party integration, so this is, someone's made this from the PyNobo, Python implementation. Very nice, kind of them, thank you very much. And we then install this into Home Assistant Community Store so that it becomes an integration that we can choose and use. So yep, install this repository in Hacks. Now, for this particular version, as I'm recording this, it says version 1.13. Now, if you go to the repository, so that's on GitHub, where this is, and you go to the releases, this took me a little while to figure out. In here, it says that it's not working as expected, locking it to version 1.1.2. I didn't quite decipher this right, but what it means is that 1.1.3 doesn't work. So choose 1.1.2 for now. There might be a later version when you're watching this. And by choosing this version, I made it work. I could not get it to work with 1.1.3. So I'm not sure why it's an actual release. Anyway, we can now check it here. It's pending restart in order for us to use it. So we're going to have to restart Home Assistant. So go, as always, configuration, go down to server controls. 
and then restart Home Assistant. Now, obviously, I'm editing out the boring wait time, so we already restarted now. And then we can go and we can then now use Home Assistant uh, with Hanobo or with the Nobo heaters. So we need to go, I'll just show you in hacks here, you can see there's an update to 1.1.3 that it really wants you to do. Don't do that. Don't update it. Uh, maybe a later version will fix this, but for now, don't. So you can see it here. It's now in hacks, which means that we can actually use it and access it. Now, there's no visual integration as such. There's nothing to say integrate or whatever. We just have to update the configuration for this. So this is a climate configuration or integration. So this I've just copied this code from the GitHub repo. So there's the platform, Nobo underscore hub. I had to put in the host, that's the ID, the 12 digits, and the IP address for it to find it. Again, I could not use discovery mode. But that was it. That's all you have to put in. Now, there is some extra features here if you want to turn the heaters off because they don't actually su uh, support turning them off, off to zero degrees, only down to seven. So there's a bit of a workaround if you need to do that. Now, I'm happy to leave them at seven degrees because I don't want everything to go super cold. Again, restart Home Assistant. And we just wait for it to restart. And then we can now go into entities. And if I search for climate, so these are all climate controls now, you can see there are three extra ones. I already had the media room. Now there is Christian Jordan's and the lounge room as climate controls or as thermostats. So there's a little thing that says it doesn't have a unique ID. I'm not sure why it said that. I haven't had an issue with whatever that means. But you can see here, I have target temperatures, I have operations, I have presets. I can now control this through Home Assistant. So I'm just going to add one to my climate overview. So in here, I have all of my different temperatures and heaters and whatnot in a single pane. So however you organize your Home Assistant climate stuff, I'm just going to edit the dashboard. And here we can add now a thermostat card for this new Nobo heater. So down here we have a thermostat. I'm going to add this. This is in this case this is the lounge room. So I'm just going to give it a name here. We're going to write lounge room because I like specificity. And then save that. And then that comes up as a card in Home Assistant. And we can now control it. So there's a range there. You can see 12 to 17 degrees. We can uh, turn it on. So this is now comfort. That is the heating mode called comfort in Nobo language. Or I can put it back on schedule, which the schedule is then controlled through the app. Uh, I don't think there's a way yet to create a schedule in Home Assistant uh, in the native way, but you could, of course, create your own scheduler in Home Assistant as well. So I can change the thermostat here up and down and control it all through this this way. Now, the cool thing, of course, is that I can now use this in automations. That is the whole idea of using Home Assistant is that you can automate uh, disparate things with each other. So I can now use, for example, let's uh, let's do an automation with a motion sensor, even though I don't actually have a motion sensor in this room yet, but that's okay, we'll just find another one. So I'm gonna go back down to configuration and I'm gonna go to automations. And we're going to create a new automation so that when a motion sensor is triggered, we're going to turn, uh, a so when a motion sensor is not triggered, we're going to turn off a heater. How about that? So we're going to have turn off um, uh, lounge room heater. Yeah, that's fine. And then I'll win the motion. Yeah, okay. And then the trigger is going to be the device. So that's a motion, um, a motion sensor. I'm just going to pick one because I don't have one in the lounge room yet. Um, but the point is that these are all IKEA motion sensors. Trotfree, Trotfree, Tratfree, whatever you want to call them. Uh, and they work now because Home Assistant, I can use that with the Nobo heater. So I'm going to say when it's stopped detecting motion for 20 minutes. So if there's been no motion for 20 minutes, I'm now going to turn this heater off. So there's all these different types of actions. If you're not familiar with Home Assistant, uh, there's different ways of doing automation as well. I kind of like this interface, which is the native one. Um, some people use Node Red, but I'm going to call a service. So if you search for climate, you can see all the different kinds of built-in services for climate in Home Assistant. And I'm going to turn off a heater. And I can now pick an entity. And here are the heaters. It's already pre-chosen the climate ones. So I'm going to turn off the lounge room heater. And now I have an automation in Home Assistant. So I've installed the heaters and I've integrated my home system. I've created a automation integration and now I'm in control. Yay. 
That's it. The heaters are now on home assistant. So there's one here that was hung up there. And that now means that we don't have to use these, which are terrible. Well, they're not terrible. They're, uh, they're always in the way and they don't heat very well. So that's very cool. I hope you got something out of that uh, because automating heaters is something that was high on my list to both, you know, making it all comfortable in here, but also to save on costs. So do give me a comment on how you'd use it if you've done it another way or if there's something that I could do better. Um, like, subscribe, all that stuff. And um, one thing I do want to mention is that I thought, okay, if I want more of these heaters and I'm going to put them over in the other side of the house, is the hub going to work? Like, is there enough range? Will they actually reach with the thermostats and whatnot? And the, the hub itself, I found out, is running 920 megahertz. So if you look at Wi-Fi, it's 2.4 gigahertz. So the wavelength is much longer, which means that the range is longer, apparently. So this should cover a whole house and even more than that. So Apparently, according to, you know, depending on how uh, strong the signal is, it could be somewhere between 50 and, a, you know, 300 meters. So that's like 700,000 miles, something like that. Um, so it should work just with one hub. Otherwise, I do consider having to have another hub and connect them to it and have two hubs coming into Home Assistant, etc. But might not have to do that. So uh, thanks for watching. And I hope to see you again in the next video. And uh, yeah, goodbye.